Hello everyone. While ago I showed how to create an example where the STM device uh, can pretend it's a keyboard and the way it works is it flashes, uh, it presents a USB device that hey I'm a keyboard and when I press this uh, user button it sends an A key. So this is great and now uh, today I will show you how to pretend uh, you're a mouse and to have a practical example I figured I will simulate recall patterns in games. So as an example uh, this is uh, Counter-Strike Go recall patterns. The way it works is when you try to shoot your AK-47 for example instead of uh, the bullets going exactly where you aim at you have a little bit of a recoil so this means the bullets will start going up and then right and left so you don't have a predictable spray pattern and part of the skill of playing the game is compensating for it. So uh, when if I want to shoot straight I actually have to move my mouse on a specific curve that is presented here and if I do that, I have a perfect recoil. So my goal right now is how about if I make my STM32 do recoil compensation for me. Uh, let's get started. To get started, I have my keyboard example. I will create a new example that's, uh, let's call it recoil. So uh, let's move uh, USB hit into recoil RS and edit this one. Maybe I shouldn't have moved. I should have just check it out. So let's undo the move. Uh, I, I created a copy. So we have recall.rs and I will have to uh, convert everything that is a keyboard into a mouse and see how it goes. If I want to look at documentation, I can go into cargo tomo and figure out what my crate is. In this case, I use USB-D human interface device. We'll copy this and uh, go into documentation. Let's find documentation for it. The example that they give is still a keyboard. Uh, that's using keyboard from uh, devices. However, if I look further at documentation, I have devices and I have mouse. Inside mouse, I have boot mouse interface, which should be good enough. It writes a boot mouse report and the boot mouse report apparently allows me to use buttons. So I have left, right, and uh, so on. And I have X and Y, which means how much my mouse moved since the last report, I would guess. So uh, in either case, I will use the boot mouse interface. So going back into uh, recoil, I will search for keyboard and replace everything with mouse. I do not need, uh, there's no NRO0, so it is just mouse interface. And there is no page anymore. Uh, pages are used for buttons, uh, which is sense. So let's see what else do I have. I don't care about the keys. So for now, I will delete this bit. I want my mouse to periodically uh, write a report. I don't have it yet. Let's delete this. And another special thing is there is no tick requirement for uh, mice. So I will delete the tick. I generally just want to adapt. And there is uh, nothing for me to read. I just need to pull the device. Let's make a comment and say, uh, make sure device, make sure device uh, interactions are handled. So uh, I have mouse here. Interface should be boot mouse interface. And to write a report, uh, let's write a boot mouse report. So at this point, I have, uh, in theory, I have a mouse uh, report. You know what? Let's actually make it configurable. So let report. At this point, I, I believe uh, I should have a mouse. Uh, so let's uh, try to run it. I don't think it should do anything. Uh, I just want to make sure that it compiles. Sure, it compiles. Uh, I want to make it do something practical. So the first thing uh, I would want to do is uh, click the button, uh, press the button uh, if the STM button is uh, pressed. What I will also do, I will remove the unused methods, uh, which is everything that's tick related. I don't really need the last tick and should tick. This should make my keyboard a little bit cleaner. Let's see how uh, I can implement this. So what I would like is uh, for the button to only be pressed if the pin is down. The button on the STM32 is inversed, which means it's low when I press it and it's high where I, I don't press it. And in order to make sure, like right now I have it into input, so uh, let's uh, set it into pull up input. 
to make sure it's high when it's not pressed and i think pressing it uh, connects it to ground so let's try this out i don't need that to do anymore right now if i use my regular mouse uh, what i know is that if i click double click it selects and if i triple click i think it selects the whole line so let's try the same thing with stm32 so i double click i triple click i have a bounce button which is excellent uh ev everything works that was me mistyping so uh now what i would like to do is to actually uh, implement some sort of a movement and uh, recall pattern and in order to do that i will probably have to handle points uh, so my first step would be let's define a class that is called uh, point so i will do a uh, struct point you wonder why f32 is uh, is because i probably need to do some sort of interpolation so even though screen locations and mouse locations are integers i would like to have uh, full precision until i finally send the report so for now everything will work on f32s except the final step and let's derive a filter if you ever wonder uh, why partial eq and, not, and partial ord not uh, eq and ord uh, it's basically for floats i have the interesting equation that nan is not the same as nan very odd uh, so this means i don't have equality uh, generally if you, if you implement eq this means that uh, for all a a should be the same as a uh, floats don't respect that so for floats you can only have partial inequality and partial ordering so i can have uh, less i can have uh, greater than and so on but uh, the, the other things may not work Great. Now, uh, the other thing that I will do, I will want to interpolate. So, uh, for example, if I know that I want to be at 0, 0 at some time point, and then, uh, let's say, 100 milliseconds later, I want to be at point 100, 100, say at 100 ms, I can ask the question at 50 ms, where should I be located? And it's obviously I should be at 50, 50, right? So I will need to implement some sort of interpolation, and this is generally arithmetic operations on points. Uh, so uh, I would like to implement probably add multiplication, subtraction, and so on. Uh, so let's see, uh, when I create a difference of two points, I will need to subtract them. So let's implement sub. Subtracting two points still uh, returns a point. We implemented subtraction. Uh, let's implement addition as well. Now let's think about the formula of interpolation. So generally I have something, I, I go from a starting point and I know uh, I need to go towards the end point. So I need to cover the difference of uh, end minus start. And then uh, I will multiply by a percentage. So what this means is if the percentage is zero, then uh, this whole term will be canceled out and I remain only with start. And if the percentage is one, then start minus start cancels out and then remains so a percentage uh, should be between zero and one uh, so uh, when i look at this formula what i find is that i need uh, difference i need addition and i need multiplying by the percentage which is a float so i have to implement uh, multiplication and the other thing is uh, in multiplication is that uh, you have uh, just one output and the denominator is generally self but it's also a template so I can use, I want to multiply by F32. Notice that this time the right hand side is an F32. So let's do the multiplication. Great. Uh, so at this point I can do interpolation. Uh, so uh, let's implement that. We already have the formula below. Just for my sanity in case I ever have bugs. And let's do start. And we don't yet use the interpolate, but that's fine. Next, uh, let's figure out how uh, we will use these points. Uh, so ideally, what I would like is to have some sort of an array. Uh, let's call it uh, spray offset. And the, the way this array uh, will look like is I need a time when a location should be reached. So uh, let's uh, say this is a U32 because that's how our time is defined right now. And next, uh, I will need to uh, know where I, I should be at that time. So uh, this is just a point, so let's say position. I have lots of spray offsets and uh, I will need some sort of a scale, uh, some sort of constant that says this is my recall pattern. Uh, so let's, uh, let's call it static. For testing purposes right now, uh, I only will put a few values. Uh, so let, let's try to make some sort of a V. So uh, when I start, I, I want to be at spray offset 
at position zero zero and then i would like to uh let's say in one second i would like to go uh low um, i don't know what low means um, how x y works so let's let's put 200 here should be noticeable and then uh in two seconds i want to go back up go back to zero uh, but keep moving x so this should create some sort of a video and notice that new is not defined so let's implement it I will need some time offsets and I will need positions. Just expect these pixels, I, I just use integers. I don't want to put periods after this. So I'll need to do some sort of conversion. So let's do that. If I use these in constants. I will uh, use a const here. So I have to use it like this. Simple. Perfect. I have recall patterns. And let's implement now something that uh, manages uh, my reports. So the way my loop works is that uh, whenever I should report, I write the next report. So I will need some sort of a structure that figures out what the next report should be. Uh, so let's uh, create that. I will name this one, um, let's say spray control, and let's figure out what it, uh, should, it should contain. So first of all, spray control cares whether I press the button or not. Uh, so let's say button has to be some sort of a type um, I will make this a template type. Let's say button pin. Should be an input pin. And then uh, I want a recall pattern. The recall pattern should be an uh, array reference. Rust will not like this because now I need a lifetime. So I need to put a lifetime in here. And if I put a lifetime there, I need a lifetime here as well. Great. And uh, I, I need to know when the, when the button was first pressed because I need to continue the recoil. Uh, so I will say spray start. And because the button may not be pressed, this is an optional value. And I need to know in time where I think my mouse is so I can move it later. And I have a definition. So I, I look for a button. I know uh, what my recall pattern is. And I know when the button was first pressed. So let's uh, start implementing this. I need to give all the arguments. The first thing we have to do is uh, create it. Let's do that. I only need the button and the recall pattern uh, to start it because uh, I will not have uh, spray starts. Everything else will be default. So let's uh, pull this up. It's also format the document. So now I know how to create a spray control. So over here, I will ignore the. Don't need the report anymore. And it doesn't know what report it should write. So let's say in this case, I need to write spray control report. Which is undefined, but we will define it soon. So uh, let's do that. I could do to do, but that will crash the program when it hits it. So just uh, let's do a default. In theory, this should run and uh, be a no op at this point. Oh, it's not mutable, sure, it should be mutable. And I have a few unused variables, that's normal. Uh, so let's uh, figure out what we do for next report. Uh, next report really cares whether I press the button or not. So uh, let's match the button. So amazing enough uh, for buttons, it can fail. Uh, STM32 will never fail, but because I used the uh, input pin trait, to read the button, it could in theory fail, so I'll just print it out. I don't care that it failed, but and the other uh, cases are when uh, this could be true. The button is pressed or false. So if the button is pressed, I would like to say that let's create a separate method so that it's just for myself and this is a spray report. And if it's not pressed, what I would like to do is uh, reset my current status of the button being pressed. So in this case, uh, I keep track of uh, spray start. I want to clear that and I will return the default. Let's implement a spray report. Inside spray report, uh, what I would like to do is find the expected uh, position and then uh, figure out how to change my internal variables so that I move towards that position. 
Uh, let's not worry about how I find expected right now. I will just assume that I have an expected position at the current time, and this will be some sort of point. And I'll implement this later. So assume I have the current expected position. Let's uh, see how much I need to move. This is how much I can move. Uh, however, most reports uh, use uh, I8. So uh, the best I can have is, let's say, uh, delta x should be some sort of uh, move amount dot x uh, into i8. And uh, this is an F32, which is outside of uh, the i8 range, probably. So let's implement some method that's... Uh, let's do this. Let's assume we have a method that knows how to convert an F32 into an i8. And uh, that should be reasonably easy to implement. What we need is, if it's outside of the range, We have femta eight, so we need how we know how much we can move. So first of all, let's uh, think that our current position has moved. We assume we will move, and now we can uh, return a boot mouse report. Don't press any buttons, but we move uh, x and y. Great. So I have something that in theory compiles. Quite a few unused stuff, but uh, that's fine because we didn't implement the expected position. Uh, let's find out how uh, we find expected position. Uh, the first thing we need to know is how much time has passed since I pressed the button. I don't like the spray start variable. It should be clear that I use milliseconds. Let's call it spray start ms everywhere. Great. And Let's fill in the match arms. If I have some time, I just need a current time uh, minus the time that uh, I started the uh, spray. And if I have nothing, I, I start a brand new spray. I know how much time has passed. And at this point, I have uh, my array uh, that has a position 0, position 1, position 2, position 3, and uh, so on. And out of this, what I would like to get is the two values in uh, where I am. So let's say if my time is around uh, here, then I would want to have T1 and T2. Like I, I want to know where I interpolate. And in order for me to do that, uh, what I would like is to consider all pairs that are like uh, P0, P1, then P1, P2, and so on until the end. Uh, so for this, I will iterate over this uh, my, my spray pattern twice, my recall pattern twice, and uh, one will be offsetted by one uh, and grab all two. So uh, let's do that. So for, uh, let's call this previous next. So I get the iterator, which will give us uh, the first element in the array. So it will be P0, P1, P2, and so on. And I would like to append to it. And what I would like to append to it is, uh, again, self recall pattern iterator. But I want to shift it by one. So instead of starting at P0, I want to uh, start at P1. So I have to skip one. So this ugly, ugly thing will eventually uh, return uh, me the previous and next spray offset. And I will, I want to filter them and only consider the ones uh, that match my uh, current time, the delta ms that I have here. So at this point, I'm saying if my time is uh, before like in this case, let's say P1 um, matches, but P0 does, uh, P2 does not uh, as, as the first element. So I am checking if uh, the current time is before the previous time, then I just continue, and the same for the other. So I, I have to be in between in previous and next. If I'm anywhere uh, outside, so if I'm before that range or after that range, just continue. So now I know uh, that my current time is here. So uh, let's see how much they progress between uh, previous and next. So somewhat ugly formula, but basically uh, it says this is a total time period uh, between the two uh, values, and this is how much I advanced within that. So this should me have, this should give me a value between zero and one that tells me how much I progressed. So I can return, and I interpolate between uh, previous. By the given amount, 
What may also happen at this point is that I go through all the values and my time is somewhere at the end, so it's outside all the values. So at that point, I should just stay at my last position. I don't know if I actually have enough, like maybe the recall pattern is empty. I'm just going to cover that edge case just in case. And then uh, what I will say, I just need the last element. Great. Uh, so I have an expected position uh, that is computed. And we can try to run it and see what happens. Now I'll press a button. And I have an assertion failed. This is great. Now let's debug it a little bit. The way it will debug it is I, I want just to print in like what uh, what the amount is that I found. So let's see it. Pre offset does not implement debug. We can fix that. Press a button. So it said uh, found zero. Oh, I inverted my conditions probably. Should be, ah, oh, this is bad. Smaller than one, greater than zero. This will be too spammy, so let's move it. Let's try again. So you can see it makes a little bit of a V and then it stops. Let me move the mouse again somewhere that it's visible and I start pressing the button. All right, so while the button is pressed, we have a little bit of recall control. Next, uh, what we should do is figure out how I can simulate an AK-47 from here. Uh, this is a bit tedious. I won't do it on video because it's painful, but uh, the idea would be I open it up in uh, GIMP and I go into filters, animation, and I unoptimize, uh, which will give me nice frames uh, for every one of these frames. It seems to be uh, 40 milliseconds. And if you toggle visibility, and this is also a tedious process, uh, you can actually find out uh, where uh, numbers change. So for example, in here, I toggled where uh, a two changes to a three and so on. So uh, when the position three is reached, I can use the measurement tool and I can figure out at this point how far I am on the x-axis. Let's say in here, I would be 81 pixels. And then on the top axis, so go here and I will say, well, this is 433. And I can plug in all these values. The other thing that will happen is my screen and my mouse, like these are pixels, but I don't know how much they correspond to real screen. So you will need some sort of a scaling for time and uh, for the position. And I did this, and this is the example online. Uh, if you check out GitHub uh, in a USB mouse, and I have a lot of contests to say, hey, what happens on this time period and what happens this time period? And there are positions uh, on the screen for the mouse. And I added a speed uh, scale for speed uh, and for position, which I take into consideration. So at that point, let's see what happens when I run such an example. Let's say USB mouse, which is pretty much the same program that like I did for recoil, except it has a reasonable spray offset that does something. So I go now here into AK-47 and I put my mouse here. Recall is ready. Let's press the button. And it will do this. Also because I didn't interpolate perfectly, you can see that it's a little bit off, but it's close enough. I mean, I think this thing can probably spray control better than I could do as a human. At least I'm not a professional gamer. It's a little bit off, but it does the thing and it does the thing extremely consistently. So uh, that was it. I hope you find this interesting or useful or maybe both. Uh, have a great day.